Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. We're excited you're here to learn about app settings today. My name is Larissa Squires and I'm a customer success manager here at Kintone. So before we jump into the platform, let's go over some housekeeping. You're likely listening using your computer speaker system, but if you'd prefer to join over the phone, just select telephone in the audio pane and the dial-in information will pop up. If you have questions at any point, you can ask them by typing into the questions pane of the control panel. We'll collect your questions and answer them during the Q&A session at the end. So what we'll be covering today. So we'll be covering the sections in the app settings tab of an app setting, which includes settings for general settings, notification, customization and integration, permission, advanced settings, and management. So let's jump in. So right now I'm in the FAQ app. This app you can find in our Kintone Marketplace. So to navigate to your app settings from within an app, you'll click the gear wheel. And then you'll go over to the app settings tab. So we will start with appearance under general settings. All right, so here you can change the app icon, app group, and add a description. First, we'll change the app icon. You can choose one of the pre-installed icons we have, or choose a custom icon that you can get off the internet. You can browse for one of them in your photos. So square photos will look the best, and the image max is 800 kilobytes. This icon will display next to the app name. So right over here is where you change the assigned app group. So an app group is a group that enables you to manage the permission of multiple apps collectively. By default, an app will belong to the public app group. Kintone administrators can manage app groups within Kintone administration. And then just a few things to note about setting app groups. So when moving an activated app to another app group, the change in app group will apply to the activated app after you click save. Any setting change other than moving the app group will not apply to the activated app until you click update app. So as soon as you change this app group and you click save here, it's going to change the app group. Everything else you'll need to update the app to see the changes. So if an app belongs to a space, the app group assigned cannot be changed. And if an app belongs to a private space, regardless of the app permission settings, the app is not available to users who do not have access to that particular space. You can click the drop down and then choose your app group. And then lastly, we have description. So this description will display at the top of your app. It can, it can include details about the app or instructions on how it is to be used. So you'll just enter your description in the rich text box. And then once you've made your changes here, you'll click save. Next, we'll go down to color theme. So this will change the color of your app and the color the records display. When choosing your color theme, it is applied to the record list screen, create record screen, edit record screen, record detail screen, and tables and graphs in which records are summarized. Please know color themes do not apply to graphs embedded in external sites using embed tags or on mobile device screens. So to that, you just choose between these six colors and then you'll click Save. Next, we'll go down to Process Management. So setting up process management in an app will allow a workflow or process for multiple users to take action on. So common uses could be a document review cycle or an expense review and approval process. So re required settings for this are a status, action, and assignee. So status, this will indicate the current status of the record. An example would be in progress, under review, or completed. Those are different statuses you can have. Action refers to the operation of changing the status of the record. What happened that 
is allowing the assignee to change this to the next status. If you are working on a record in progress, the action may be send to review. Then the status would be under review, and then the next action could be send back or approved. And then assignee, this is the user who is allowed to take the action. One or more assignee can be set for each status. So to start your configuration, first decide on your statuses. So here we have a very simple setup for not started, then in progress and completed. To add more, you'll just click the plus and then to delete any of the X, and you can also move around the order with the drag and drop. So assigning listed um, for not started, you can choose between set to anybody or created by, which would be who created the record. So this is um, just for who can initiate the record to start the process. Branch criteria will help you filter out records to show different options based on a field. So, you know, you can filter out if it's this, then we have these options. So next, choose the status after the action is taken. Then you can type the action name. So this will be the status after you click this action. Then we'll go down to the next line and choose the next status. So we'll pick who the assignee is. You can choose from a field in the app or you can type people's names in. Again, you can set branch criteria and so on until you finish the flow. So here you can choose the user chooses one assignee, all assignees must take action or one assignee in the list must take action. Type in their name here or if you have a user selection field within your app, you can choose that person to take action. If you'd like to have some, um, some options have two options to choose from, for example, maybe approved or move back to in progress. So you can click the plus sign all the way over here, and do it here, or we also have here. That's just depending on whether you need to set your filters. So for example, we'd have to add another process and then we'll go back and then you just have to change the action. So it could either be approved or sending back to in progress. So it can be tricky to change your workflow once you have records in different statuses. So I definitely recommend deciding on your flow first, then create it in Kinchon and test it out. You can't update the process management statuses that are currently in a status. So if you try to change when you already have records that are in other statuses, it won't let you update the app changes. So I definitely recommend sitting down and figuring out your process flow and then working it into King Tom. So before you have this process set up in your app, you're going to have to click Enable Process Management, and then you'll click Save. So next we'll go down to notifications and we'll start with general notifications. So with general notifications, you can have a notification sent when a record is added, edited, a comment is posted, a status is changed, or when a file is imported. So you'll add the user group or department you want to be notified. And then you'll check the boxes for notifications you want sent. And if you want to delete one, just click the X at the end. If you check the box, send updated comment notifications to all commenters, then when a new comment is posted, all of the people who have commented on that record will be notified, even if they weren't specifically mentioned in the comment. So that's this one right here. So when you're all set setting your general notifications, you'll click Save. Now we have our per record notification. Here you can add notifications to you sent when something specific is within a record. So you'll choose, you'll click add, and then you'll choose the field. 
then set what you want it to be equal to. And then if you have more requires, more requirements, you'll click plus. To delete, you'll click X. And then you'll type out a summary. This is what will be displayed in the notification. So something like, please reach out to this person. So if you had a due date in here, um, maybe for when their contract is coming up, you can say, um, contract coming to an end, please reach out. That could be a summary for the notification. And then to the right, you're gonna choose who the notification will be sent to. So you can choose a user group department or a user selection field that you have within the app. And then you'll click add to add more per record notifications. And then please note notifications will not be sent to users who create the records or users who don't have permission to the app or the record. Notifications won't be sent if the record is already, if the record is added by Excel or CSV. You can't set conditions for the field text area, rich text, attachment, or related records. So to delete, you'll click the X on the edge, and then you can click delete. Lastly, for notifications, you have a reminder notification. Here you can set out reminder notifications based around the date and time condition. You'll click add to choose the date and time conditions. You'll type out the summary like we did before, and this will be displayed in the notification just like with the per record. To the right, you'll specify who you want to be notified by selecting a user group or department and the user selection field within an app. My apologies for the per record notifications. This would be better for the due date because this is based on a time. So this would be the better example for if you need to send out a notification 30 days before maybe a contract expires. So you'll wanna do that for a reminder. So for reminder notifications, you can create up to 10 reminder triggers. You can't specify fields within a related record. If you were to set this for a field within a table, a notification will be sent each time one of the fields in that table meets the criteria. Notifications will not be sent to those who do not have the permissions to the app or record. And just like before, to delete, you'll click the X at the red. And when you're all set, you'll click Save. Now we'll go over to customization and integration. So we have our plugin. So a plugin is a software module that you can install into an app to enhance its capabilities. So here's where you'll add in that plugin to your app. In order to add a plugin to the app, first an app, um, an app administrator needs to install the plugin from Kintone administration. So someone with the Kintone administration would have to go in and add these. Once you have the plugins installed into the platform, you'll click New. You'll select the plugin you'd like to add to the app. Here you'll see the plugin name, the icon, and then the description. We'll click Add. And now you'll need to configure the settings for the plugin. So you'll click the gear wheel under Change Settings. So the settings for every plugin will be different and you may need to add fields to your form to complete the settings for the plugin. So when you're done editing, you'll click Save. And then to delete a plugin, you'll click the trash can on the end and remove. You can find available plugins via the developer network. Plugins not listed on the add-on page of our website will not be covered by Kingtone support. Next, we'll go down to JavaScript and CSS customization. So here you can upload files you created to Kintone to customize your app. Prior to development, make sure to check out this JavaScript coding guidelines article from our developer network. So here you will decide the scope of customization. You can choose affect all users, which will affect all of the users with the app affect only app administrators. This will show changes only for those with permissions and app settings. 
Just a little tip before applying the customization to all users, you should apply it only to the app administrators. So by doing this, you can test to make sure the customization is working correctly without affecting your other users. And then we have disable. The files will be uploaded, but they won't go into effect. Then here you can upload your files. You can upload JavaScript files for PC or mobile devices up to five megabytes. And then you can also do CSS for only PC up to 512 kilobytes. So JavaScript and CSS customization is not covered by Kintone support. However, you can check out our developer network for insights from other Kintone developers. If you have some customization like done by our team, you can reach out to support at kintone.com and they will get you in touch with the right person to schedule out your scoping call. Once you're all set with this, you'll click save. Next, we'll go to API tokens. So you'll use API tokens to grant access to specific apps through the Kintone REST API. The REST API provides functions to retrieve record information, add, update and delete records, and upload and download files. So you'll click generate, then here is your API token. Over here you can check the boxes to grant different permissions for this specific token. Click the trash icon on the end to delete and then save. If you have questions or would like more info on API tokens and the Kintone REST API, please visit our Kintone developer network. And then lastly for this section, we have webhook. You can utilize the webhook feature to connect to services outside of Kintone. It allows data in a record of an app to be sent to a particular endpoint in a certain format. This data can be sent in the following time, when a new record is added, when a record is saved after editing, when a record is deleted, when a user posts a comment to a record, when a status of your process management is updated. So the Kintone webhooks is a good way to send data to an endpoint without the use of coding. Setting up a webhook will only involve stating an endpoint and the timing you would like the data to be sent. You would though have to set something up on the endpoint so that this data could be caught and be used to your advantage. So if you would like to do this without coding, you can use a cloud service like Zapier to catch the Kintone webhook data and connect it to other services. So to add the webhook, you'll click the plus icon. You'll fill out the description or title, the URL of the webhook endpoint, the events trigger and make sure it's activated with the checkbox. And then you'll click save. You can find more information on using webhooks in our developer network as well. Like other customization features, this won't be covered by Kintone support, but we do have a uh, lovely developer network that you can visit to chat with other ones. I definitely encourage you to visit that and leverage that community. So next we'll go down to permissions. We'll start with app level. So here's where you can set the app level permissions. These permissions will allow you to set who can view records, which means access the app, add records, edit records, delete records, manage the app, and then import from file and export to file. So add a new user group or department by entering their name here. Choose one of our departments. Next, choose the permissions you'd like to grant them by checking the box or unchecking, depending on what you need to grant. And then click the X at the end to delete. If you add a department, you will notice, we'll put that department back in there. If you add a department, you'll notice an extra box for permission inheritance. When checked, the permissions apply to all members of the child department. So you'll use the arrows to drag and drop the user groups or departments where you'd like to place them. One thing to note is priority goes from top to bottom. So whatever is on top is what the system goes by. 
We want to keep this in mind as you create your permissions. So I'm the app creator, but I'm also part of this everyone group. Since app creator permissions are set above everyone, the settings for the app creator will be what applies to me. Just to go over that again, so everyone, I am part of this group, and if I uncheck all these boxes, you think, okay, she's in this group, she doesn't have access. But I am the app creator, and that is above the everyone settings, and therefore, I have all the settings that are set here. So here's a little tip. The most important feature I think should be set within every app you create is to make sure no one has access to delete the records, except for maybe the app administrator. So this way you won't have any data accidentally deleted. So to do that, you just uncheck those boxes. So here, only the app creator will have access to delete records in this app. And then you'll click Save. Now we'll go down to Record Permissions. This is where you can filter out records so only certain people have access to certain records. So we'll click Add. You'll choose a field to go off of to set the restrictions. If this field includes or does not include this, then over to the right you'll choose who. So you can add in a user group or department or choose a user group or department selection field within the app to go by. You can allow them to view, edit, or delete by checking the box. And then if we had multiple, you can reorder those. And then you can also reorder this as well. So this again will be like with the all app permissions. Um, it goes from top to bottom for priority. So if I was to save this with it saying everyone has all of these permissions, we'll X that in here. You might be saying, well, I set the app permission level thing. Everyone couldn't edit or couldn't even access the app. So then should I disable this for everyone here too? So not only do the individual permissions have top down priority, but the three permission levels do too. So app level permissions take priority over the record level and the record level takes priority over the field level. So even if here it says everyone can view, it's only referring to everyone who has access to this app based on your app level permission. So once you're all set with this, you'll click save. And then lastly, we'll go down to field level permission. So with this, you can block specific fields from being seen by certain people. So even if they can see the record, they will not see the field you restrict access to here. So a good example for this is if you have social security numbers or credit card numbers in your app, you may want to limit the people who can see that information. So here you'll click the add, choose the field. So we'll just say, None of these really make sense to hide, but we'll just go with it. Choose the field, and then over here you're going to choose who has access to see it. So maybe I only want myself to see this author field. So currently I'm the only one who will be able to see this field if I were to save and update this app now. And then again, you can top down permissions here as well. You can have more than one person. And then click the X at the end to delete and save when you're all finished. So the biggest tip is just remember, top takes priority. So within the individual permissions, the top level takes priority and then also app takes priority over records and records takes priority over the field. Now we'll go over to advanced 
settings. So we'll start with category. So this allows you to categorize the records by different groups and subgroups. So this feature is great for organizing content such as videos, sales collateral, or marketing content. It's also a great feature for an FAQ, whether it be an FAQ for your product or for individual departments to explain the processes and answers. So here, since this is from our marketplace, we already have this category feature set up. So make sure to check the box Use Categories to enable this feature. And then next, you'll want to start to fill in the category tree. You'll click the plus to add in extra lines, and then over here to add the subgroups. And then click X to delete. So you can configure up to five levels of hierarchy. Once you enable this feature, a new field will be added to your app form. It won't show on your form settings tab, but it will show in your records. So it will resemble a multiple choice field and will show the categories you enter in this category tree. When viewing your records in a list view, your categories will also display on the left side, so you can quickly navigate to the records within those categories. So once you're all set, click and then update out, of course. We'll go down the localization. So you can name your app and fields in Japanese, English, and simplified Chinese. And then depending on the user's language settings, the appropriate language will display. So for example, if, you're, if the name of your app in both English it will pop over. App name, yes. So if you name your app in both English and Japanese, the app name will be displayed in English for the English user interface. And then whatever you have here under Japanese will display in the Japanese user interface. So a user can change their language in their account settings. And when you toggle through the different tabs, you can choose what information you would like to have options for the available languages. So you'll simply just enter what you want it to display, and that is what the user will see when they select either the English, the Japanese, or the simplified Chinese. And then save. Next, we'll go into title field. So from the drop down, you can select a field to be used as the record title. So the title set here will display on record details, notifications, search results, and also the record list title when using the Kintone mobile app. So by default, this is going to be set to record number. So a record number is a unique field each record has, and it's set by Kintone automatically. So the record title will not be easily recognizable to you, and therefore, that's why it's best to change it to something that is recognizable. So after you choose your new title, you click Save. And now when you do searches or receive notifications, instead of seeing the record number, the field you chose is the first thing that you will see. So I always highlight um, this setting in my one-on-one -on -one training because it's very important to note when creating your new app. Then we have miscellaneous settings. So you'll check the box show thumbnails to show a thumbnail if there's an attachment field. When you click into the thumbnail, the image will display in its actual size unless it's larger than your browser, in which case it will adjust to fit your browser. So it will only display a thumbnail if the image is a bitmap, GIF, JPEG, or PNG file. And if the size is more than 10 megabytes, the thumbnail will not be displayed. So this only really matters if you're going to have an attachment field with images. Next, we have an app code, which refers to a code for identifying an app. The app code set will be reflected in record numbers. So for example, if I put the app code as Kintone, then the record number would be Kintone-1, Kintone-2 and so on. So a record number with an app code turns into a link when written in Kintone After Spaces, and that will take you to that specific record. 
So you don't need to have an app code, but then you can't refer to that specific record in other spaces. So basically it's just when you type in your app code and then you use that in, um, in a comment, for example, um, it will automatically link to that specific record. And then please know once this is set, it cannot be changed. It must be unique across apps and the code must start with a letter. It can contain up to 64 letters and numbers. Basically, you just can't duplicate it because it does turn into a link. So you can't have more than one or wouldn't know which app to go to. So if you check the box, enable bulk deletion of records, then anyone with permission to delete records will have the option to bulk delete. So to use bulk deletion, you would first enable it here. Then you open up a specific view, which includes all the records you'd like to delete. Then you'll click the three ellipses to the right of the app and click bulk delete. So that's from your record list screen. You'll have that option. So this feature is disabled by default and I highly recommend keeping it disabled until you need it. And then right after immediately disabling it. So you can't undo a deletion. And then down here by default, track change history of records is enabled. So this allows you to see the history of a record. You can see any changes that have been made to it, who made those changes, and it also allows you to restore it to the previous version. So to view history, you'll open up a record and you'll click the clock icon to the right, which lives under the comment icon. If you disable this feature, then all of the history for your records will be deleted. And then we'll go down to comments. So by default, enable comments is enabled. This allows users to comment on the side of records. If you don't want anyone commenting on the records, just uncheck the box to disable and then save. Next, we will set the significant digits of numbers and rounding. So total number of digits, here you'll specify the maximum total number of digits. That includes the decimal part between the integer one to 30. Number of decimal places to round, you can set an integer between one and 10. And then rounding, select the rounding method for decimal part. You can choose round to the nearest even number, round up or round down. So when this setting is changed, the number and calculated fields in the app will update to reflect what is here the next time the record is updated. So um, whatever you had before will stay like that unless you go in, edit the app, and then save again. So the next time the record's updated is when these changes will take effect. And then we have changing the first month of the fiscal year. So when using the graph or sum feature, you can summarize data per quarter with the value in the date and time field. So by default, the first month is sent to January. The app must already be created to set this action. So when you're done making the changes, you'll click Save and Update App. Okay, Action. So Action copies data from the record you are viewing and creates a new record in a different app including that data so the app must already be created to set the action so here you'll click new you'll enter the action name then you have the source which is the current app so you won't need to enter anything here Target, the app you'd like to push the information from this app into. Then you have field mapping, which is the information in which fields in this app need to be placed on what fields in the target app. And then we have available to. So only the people listed here will see the action button within an app. These are the only people who can use this feature. 
So just as an example, we have an FAQ app, and then we also have a uh, help doc management app. So if we have an FAQ question come in that we think should be in our help center, we have an action button that says create new help doc. So when you click create new help doc within that record, it pulls over the question and the answer from this FAQ app into the help doc management app so that we can refer to that when we're creating the new help article. So when you add in an action to edit, you'll see a little pencil icon. And then next you'll see the action name. The app it's targeting will show here. Who last updated the settings of the action and when? And then to delete, you'll see a little trash icon at the end. So that completes the advanced settings. So lastly, we have management. So preview, you'll use this feature to test your app before updating. When using this function, none of the data you create or edit is saved in the app. So notice our categories we created earlier. That's how they'd list out in your app. You may not be able to test all the feature sets. So for example, you'd need to update the app before testing out the process management or any actions. And then delete this app. So here you will delete your app if it's no longer useful. Once you delete an app, you can undo it. So apps referred to a data source app by other apps or templates can't be deleted. So for example, if we had related records relating to another app, you would not be able to delete this app until you remove that field and the field settings from the other app. So when you're positive you're ready to delete, you'll just go ahead and click delete. All right, so that concludes our training for app settings. So make sure you update your app once you're done making all of your changes in order for any of these settings to take effect. We're now going to begin answering the questions submitting during the, today's presentation. As a reminder, you can still submit questions through the questions pane in your attendee control panel. I'm going to give you a minute to formulate any questions, and if we don't get to your question today, I will follow up with you afterwards. All right, let's go over some questions. So if I disable categories after it's already been in use, will it delete the categories I have chosen for the records I already created if I decide to enable it again? So it will not delete the categories assigned. When you disable the feature, the list of categories on the left will disappear and the chosen category will not show in the record. When you re-enable it, it will show the category in the record and it will have the list of categories on the left of the list view again. And then next question, what do you recommend setting in each app? So I recommend you set a title field when creating a new app. I also recommend deciding on some permission settings. So most importantly, who do you want to view the app and manage the app? Then I also recommend making sure no one has permission to delete records. If you decide to keep the delete feature on, you can't undo a record deletion. But you can see what record was deleted and who deleted it within your audit log. So the audit log feature will only be available to Kintone administrators. But definitely most importantly, set the title field, decide on your permission, most important information is making sure people can't delete. 
Okay, so that's all the questions we have for today. So thank you everyone for attending today's live training session. If you have any more questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to support at kingtone.com. So you'll receive an email in the next 24 hours with this webinar recording. It will also be up on our YouTube channel. So on behalf of Kintone, thank you for joining us and have a great rest of your day.